Thanks to the Stanley Opinion Foundation. Um, in preparing my thoughts for this evening, I had to think of myself as a social artist, uh, really for the first time. At the beginning of my career, I used to ask, how does this film speak to the human condition? Later in my career, I asked, what will I get paid? <laughs> and these days, I simply ask, will I have to get wet? <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember watching Gary Cooper standing on that dusty street, staring at the town clock as it ticked closer and closer to high noon. And I was struck by two things. First, the fact that I couldn't sit in my chair. I was so tense and nervous, which I later came to learn was the genius of Stanley Kramer. But also, I was struck by the fact that Gary Cooper was scared. He was really scared. And I thought, hmm, the Long Ranger doesn't get scared. <laughs> and I realized that I was looking at violence depicted as it really is. And when Gary Cooper stood up to those men, despite the fact that he was scared, I realized I was seeing what bravery really is. I, like most film folk, have found myself in conversations through the years with various people defending the content in films. And I, like most of us, would say, hey, don't shoot the messenger. Uh, we're a reflection of society. We're just telling the stories that we see out there. I'm not so sure these days. We've got all kinds of violence in films. We've got uh, horror violence, operatic violence, funny violence, revenge violence, police violence, cartoon violence. And if I'm going to be honest, sometimes I really dig it. When that guy jumps out in front of Harrison Ford waving the sword around and he thinks for a moment, pulls the pistol out and shoots him, I howl with laughter. I do every time I see it. So, may I say, I'm not completely clear on this subject, but I'm pretty sure about a few things. And one of those is that I believe a major part of what we do as filmmakers is to, for a living, is to tell the truth. It's under imaginary circumstances, yes, it's all made up, yes, but within those imaginary circumstances, it's our job to figure out where the truth lies. And I know that when you do that, when you figure out where the truth is, the audience not only recognizes it, but they love it. It's the thing that makes a moment or a joke live with them for the rest of their lives. And in my experience, when you hew to the most truthful solutions, when you're trying to figure out a story, you tell a better story. <coughs> When the hero gets the piss kicked out of him by four brawny types in a fight that goes on for five minutes and it includes the standard kick to the groin and the fall down the stairs and the straight right arm to the jaw. And then in the next scene, he's making love to the heroine. Well, I think the filmmakers just told a lie about getting beat up. And I believe that he loses, he or she loses the audience just a little bit. By the same token, when Faye Dunaway took that bandage off of Jack Nicholson's nose and you saw that gash in his nose and the stitches, we all winced. Jack Nicholson winced too. He acted as if it hurt like hell. And not to put too fine a point on it, that scene was followed by one of the sexiest love scenes in the history of film. And I submit it was better because Roman Polanski played the truth of getting your nose sliced open. There are few things more dramatic than shooting and killing a person. You shoot 50 people and I get bored. And I pray I'm not moving into old fart territory, but maybe <laughs> it's time that killing people in funny ways should go the way of the Edsel and mock turtle lips. majority of us never experience violence firsthand, so our view of violence comes from movies. When I was a kid, we all knew how to throw a hand grenade. You rip
rip it off your vest, you grab the, the thing with your teeth and you toss it at the Nazis or the VC or whoever. No GI ever did that. You rip your teeth out. But that's the way John Wayne did it, and that's the only thing I know about holding, uh, throwing hand grenades. Um, sometime in the 70s, all the street gangs started holding their pistols like this. Well, anybody who shoots pistols knows that's idiotic. Where did it come from? It came from movies and TV. In my early days, I was doing a play at Lincoln Center. Dave Mamet had written a one-act film called Prairie, a one-act play called Prairie de Chien. It was set in the 1930s, and I played this country bumpkin Hasey who gets suckered by a card shark on a train. And at a point, my character stood up and pulled a pistol on the card shark. And I could not do that moment without going into a police crouch with both hands on the gun. And I hope you can appreciate that my, my uh, go-to source on how to handle a gun came from watching other actors do it. A couple of weeks ago, uh, my daughters and I were going to the airport and uh, we started counting billboards that had sexy actors or actresses looking hot while pointing a gun at us. And we got bored with that game when we surpassed a dozen billboards. Now please don't get me wrong, I don't want anybody or any organization or any government agency to tell me what stories I can tell or how I can tell them. But as I watch the news and this orgy of violence that seems to be engulfing us, in a country where there are more gun shops than Starbucks, I feel obliged to say to my fellow filmmakers, let's make sure we're not part of the problem. Let's make sure we're making things better. And let's do it in the way we know best. In the way that's been the hallmark of this industry from almost from the beginning. By telling the truth. It makes a better story. Thank you so much.